boy, I've got a... There's two people upstairs. Oh, Someone just come down. We have a big problem. Good morning, Bondo Lifeguards. <laughs> really? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, cheers for that. Thank you. Bondo Essential to North Tower. Guys, just put your bonos out here. Flat rock. Because divers had to climb up the rocks to get away from the seal. This man has been spearfishing behind the point at North Bondi. He just wants to go home, the poor boat. His catch has been pilfered by a cheeky seal. I was a little bit worried at the start, but when I was looking through the binoculars, you could see he was safe because he got up onto the rock. Look at him, he's just standing on that one rock. <laughs> he's looking at his floaty, his floaty's just off to the right. The catch of fish is attached to a line on the man's spear gun, which has also been procured by the seal. It's a full on scene out there. The seal's like, nah, mate. Fortunately, the volunteer lifesaver jet ski happens to be nearby. One of the lifeguards to the support ski. There's a diver on the rocks who's um, just had a run with a seal. Oh, no, the club is on route. I think the diver's told him to go out and get his stuff. He's probably got fish on it. That's why he wants it back. He's got the spear gun. Oh but he's not going to be able to get that close to the rock. The jet ski keeps its distance from the rocks, but that poses a problem for the spear fisherman. Look, he doesn't want to get off the Mate, rock. get in the water. <laughs> get in the water. He's that scared. He won't even go from the three metres to the jet. The sea will chase him up the rocks. I'd be scared too. Go, mate. Get in there. Do it. Marooned on a rock. There's only one way back to safety. Everyone's running out to the boat ramp to have a look. Get in there, mate. <laughs> 29 year old Mesalame is originally from Fiji. It's only the second time he's been spearfishing. I got into a suck, but when I when I come uh, when it uh, pop up, then I saw the seal. Then I tried to, then I was going shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> he was a lovely bloke, never seen a seal before in his life. <laughs> I don't know, hopefully it hasn't, it hasn't ruined his perspective on seals, because they're generally friendly creatures. Yeah, I'm so scared now for seals. For public safety, a shark detection system has been installed off Bondi. The shark boy is a big yellow UFO floating out the back of the bay at Bondi, and it, um, it has a sonar that, that picks up tagged sharks and sends messages through to the, the, the authorities. All messages automatically go to head lifeguard Hoppo. That pings when a tagged shark comes through and notifies that there is something swimming in the bay. As well as detecting sharks, the boy serves as a great marker point for lifeguards doing board training. It's a good point to go out and back. It's probably roughly 500 metres out, and that gives you a kilometre of time you're out and back. But not all lifeguards enjoy being so far from land. I've got a phobia of sharks, right? And she's like, don't ever come near me. Like, I never want to see one of these things in the water unless I'm in a cage. I just hyped Jesse up and said, mate, let's, let's pal around the shark camp. Mate. And I was like, come on, mate, let's get out there. Like, you hell man, we're getting out there, we're paddling around, and look, it's right there, and he's going, no, I'm not. In the end, I was just like, come on, let's go. 9.02 a.m. Jesse and Jethro reach the boy. It's impossible to see much below the surface. Once we got to the boy, we tapped it. <laughs> Jesse just pinned it for sure. <laughs> The look of death in his eyes, he just wanted land. <laughs> just because no sharks can be seen, that doesn't mean there aren't any nearby. We come back up to the tower and uh, Dino was up there laughing. And we're like, what are you laughing at? And he goes, look at this message I just got off Hoppo. <laughs> Great White, 9 a.m., 7th of January. So say three, three metres in length. Look at his face. 
see? Like, who has that much bad luck? There most probably hasn't been a great white in Bondi in how long? And as soon as me and Jeff pedal out to that stupid yellow boy, there's a great white out there. Jesse's terrified of sharks. He, um, yeah, he, he's, he's rattled today. He, he, I think he thinks he's got really bad luck. But, um, yeah, I reckon you make your own luck. If the big boy wants to get you, there's no getting back. So, um, I don't think I'll be doing that anytime again soon. Lockie was first recruited in winter last year. When I first got the job, yeah, I was really excited, but like a little bit nervous at the same time. It's just gonna take your time, it's a skill. Yeah. Like, don't put any pressure on yourself. Yeah. I was lucky enough to have Lockie on his first day. I was like, right, I'd push a little tub like you when I started here too. Yeah. Same hairstyle as well, by the way. I'm looking at this kid and I'm looking and thinking, well, I've got two boys and he, he reminds me of my son. Who better to show Lockie the ways of the force than Bondi's resident prankster, Harry's? They're still on their pee plates at 18. They're not a qualified driver to come down to an unfamiliar environment like the beach. I'm so embarrassed. It's not funny. Right. We'll, we'll get through this. He needed to have a helmet on. So we're IDing all the spots out in the ocean, having a look. I can't take it seriously because I'm wearing a helmet. Look at the bill. We're looking at me. Hey, look, get it on. Mate, they're here for fun. Lockie was this skinny little nerdy kid. I just didn't think he was cut out for the job. If you want to have a swim, please head up to the red and yellow flag. Thank you. Mate, my voice is too high. I can't be no, on the no, megaphone. I can't be on the megaphone. Young trainees don't stay wet behind the ears for long. And it wouldn't be a lifeguard challenge without a campaign of dirty tricks. Because Whippet is Whippet, we wanted to try and play a little prank on him. If anyone deserves bad luck, it's Whippet. He's done some, done some awful things to people over the years. Whippet's played many a prank on me over the years, so today it's payback. It's Vaseline on his board. He can take a joke, but he doesn't like it when the joke involves him. Oh. Oh my god. I don't that's, even want that on my fingers, that's eh? Massive, babe. <laughs> Brutal conditions have forced most competitors to abandon the swim leg of the lifeguard challenge. Hats off to the guys that make it. Exhausted, but still in the race, yeah. Whippet and trainee Lockie are second and third. But there's trouble brewing. I actually kind of smelled the rat before the race started, so I just questioned a few people people that I knew would know about the prank. It's so big. Everyone denied it. And so then I just say, well, well you won't care if I take your board because there's nothing wrong with my board anyway. With it palms off the sabotage board and decides to take Harry's board instead. I asked Harry's if he'd take but he said no. <laughs> so, Harry's it was. Where are these clowns coming from? The rest of the field emerge randomly all over the beach. <laughs> Competition oh, is in disarray. Yeah, grab that one. Grab that one. Harry's finally completes the punishing swim leg. I come up the beach at Bronte, and by that stage, I'm exhausted. Whippet's taking your board. And I've picked the board up, and I've realised straight away that the thing's been lubricated up. Come on, mate, go get him. It's not over. Long paddle home. It's got petroleum jelly all over. It's got <laughs> my arms covered in Vaseline. I've Obviously, I've just gone from, you know, exhaustion to frustration and frustration to complete anger. Yeah, it would have been pretty disappointing for Harry's. The back end of the field finally make it into Bondi. Coming in close to last is a none too happy Harry's. Harry's was a little, uh, little uptight, a little upset. I felt bad because I'd taken his board and he actually was one of the few that did finish the swim and I play lots of sport. I apologise. I don't take any stuff. I <laughs> didn't know who else was to take because I didn't Mate, know whose was whose. You're very lucky. <laughs> well, don't try and call me out like and say I'm very lucky. I was extremely angry. I didn't realise that all of them had been helped around the point. And here I am turning on Paul Whippet and he, he doesn't deserve it. He's a great waterman and he deserved to win. I mean, at the end of the day, a race is a race, a prank's a prank, and a few words on the sand and cuddle in the shower, it was all good. <laughs> uh, I'd like to dedicate this one to you, Harry. Better luck next time, both in the pranking and in the race, mate. A broken rack has left Beardy and Harrison without a rescue board. Unfortunately, we're, we're down a board rack, so no rescue equipment. Beardy reaches for a device which belongs to a much earlier era. 
even though he wasn't too far from the beach, he was, he was struggling. That's what happens. They can't put their feet on the ground. They start to panic and a few waves come past their head and, and they think they're going to drown. I actually tripped over. I thought I was going to headbutt the sand. Well, yeah, some of the boys that are only kind of here in the modern era, I'd say, like, is they wouldn't have done many tube rescues on Bondi. This is the first time I've ever seen a tube rescue at Bondi. Mate, this will be uh, hundreds of years' time. Lifeguards at Bondi look back in this moment, go, that guy, Daniel McLaughlin, Betty, he rescued a guy off a tube. Felipe from Chile was standing on a sandbank when he was washed into deeper water. I found it hilarious. And I think when he saw me come out to get him, he was laughing at me too. Look at him. It's... <laughs> wow. It was actually pretty funny. I'm watching from north. I love a tube rescue. Mate, he's, he's nailed it. He's done well. The rescue may have been minor, but it's a momentous one for Beardy. The rescue buoy or tube was, was probably came to fame in, in David Hasselhoff's hands, the Hoff. If the Hoff wants to copy me on the air guitar, I'll let him. Probably the worst situation of their life. They scream at you in other languages, you don't know what they're saying, they think they're gonna die and when they're back on Terra firma, I suppose, they're uh, pretty happy. Yeah, my senior. <laughs> That's all right. It's good to get a thank you here and now. Some people are embarrassed and walk away, and that's fine, but when they come and say thanks, it's pretty humbling. He may be grateful to Beardy, but Felipe has no thanks for his friend Nico. I tried to ask, help me, Mike, help me. And the guy, oh, no, sorry, Mike. Just disappear, and he's there. <laughs> of course, there are always two sides to a story. He just started, I thought he was like, just, I don't know, jumping in the, but then I, I saw that something was really bad. Like I could barely see his face but, and no, yeah. But they came so fast and yeah, it was like a miracle, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, Beardy's uh, claimed he was, Probably like the Hoff now, the most recognisable to use a tube, and and probably uh, is correct. And uh, not many people use a tube down here at Bondi. When all is said and done, lifeguards just want to close the doors without further event, or at least that's the plan. Oh, wait, I've got a... There's two people upstairs. Can someone just come down? We have big problems. Oh, 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 that's not ideal. So I was reversing in the trailer. Now it was five to seven. It's been a busy day. All the boys want to go home. I just heard this deafening bang. Hey, um, just... Ah! I've hit the door. And the door hit the floor. Uh, Break the door. With no way of locking away the buggies and jet skis, Jules calls the boss. Hey, Hoppo, it's Jules here at Bondi. We have quite a big problem. Not wanting to panic, Hoppo, Jules tries to make light of the situation. One of the roller doors has actually blown off. But Hoppo has seen one too many summers to fall for that. I mean, to blow the roller door off here, we'd have to probably have cyclonic, you know, conditions, and it definitely wasn't blowing that hard. <laughs> you know, Jethro's cracked a few milestones in the service over the years. He locked himself in the North Tower. Came in beaching the jet ski and dislocated his shoulder. And now packing up the beach, he's taking out the roller door. Never going to hear the end of this one, eh? Uh, we can't even put the bikes away. <laughs> if someone comes down tonight, they could take them. With thousands of dollars of equipment unsecured, a different kind of guard is needed on the beach tonight. 
had to get a security guard down for the night to keep an eye on because there's no way of securing the tunnel. This is probably my worst incident to date. Everyone's got a roller door in their life. I'm not sure if I'll ever achieve my quest for the, being the perfect lifeguard, but um, I'll keep trying. <laughs> Nobody's perfect.